acknowledge your lordship Jesus thank you for your love thank you for your grace thank you for the forgiveness of sin Lord we give you praise thank you for setting us free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be glorified this morning Lord all glory power might and majesty be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the King we give you praise amen hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, Bazalwane. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank God. See, we appreciate God. Amen. Tell us a side and appreciate. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. My name is Sandy Lematsebula. To those who may not know me, I love Jesus, his Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. We appreciate you, Nkosi, your leadership, your love. Um, you and your family, you are so much a blessing in our lives. Amen. I do trust that this morning <clears throat> we will not leave this place the same. Amen. Amen. May we open... Um, Turn to John chapter 8, verse number 36. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Again. So, If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Again. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Maybe you may recall an instance where you got a break, a breakthrough, and discovered that while you were enjoying that, you woke up. What's your papa? And missed that thing, that breakthrough that you were experiencing. And realized, I'm still in the same challenge before. If the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. You are not (laughs) dreaming. It's not freedom that you receive from a dream. It's freedom as if you were dreaming. When the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. I'm here to say this morning, child of God, if Jesus sets you free, you are free. You are free indeed. Walk in that freedom. He could have just said, if the sun sets you free, you are free. But he says, you are free indeed. That to me says, once he sets me free, there is nobody who would have authority to take me back to the bondage. Once the sun sets me free, I am free indeed. Amen. Amen. Leviticus chapter 16 from verse 7. I want to talk this morning and challenge you regarding the freedom that Christ has given us. The root of our bondage was sin. 
any authority that the devil has upon mankind, it's brought about because of sin. When God created Adam, he placed him in the garden. And by that time, the devil was already there. Are you with me, Brother Amen. So God created you, mankind, in the presence of the enemy, and he didn't bother about the enemy. He created his men, placed him in the garden, and he fellowshiped with his men. Up till then, nothing whatsoever that the enemy said mattered in the life of Adam. He was just it didn't matter because the enemy didn't have authority over him. The only thing that gave the enemy authority over Adam was sin. Are you with me, Brother Ryan? So sin brought mankind under bondage. Under the authority of the enemy. And then Christ comes and say, whom I set free is free indeed. Which means when Christ delivers you from the power of the enemy, he took away that which brought or which gave the enemy authority over you, which is sin. He removed that. Any person who comes to Christ is taken back to the garden when God created man. Where the enemy does not matter in his life. It's God and what God says that mattered in the life of Adam until he sinned. The day you came to Christ is the day God brought, God brought you back to your rightful position where you are free and free indeed. Not because the enemy isn't there anymore. In the presence of your enemy, you are free and free indeed. Leviticus chapter 16. Until I start from verse 7 to 10. Then he is to take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He is to cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Aaron shall bring the goat whose lot falls to the Lord and sacrifice it for a sin offering. But the goat chosen for by Lord as the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to be used for making atonement by sending it into the wilderness as a scapegoat. Quite interesting. Let's see this picture today. I trust God that we'll be able to get our message from this. The whole house of Israel would come before the tabernacle. For the day of atonement. So there were two goats that they brought before the Lord. One goat or the priest would cast the Lord. Please interpret that for me. And then the, the Lord would fall upon this God. That God would be used, would be sacrificed before the Lord. So one of the two goats would die. The other one would live. It is not complete until those two goats come before God. The other one would shed the blood. As the blood is shed, blood is symbolic of life. Blood is symbolic of death. 
So as the blood is shed, you as a sinner, you know that the God has taken your place. You are the one that is supposed to die, but the God is dying in your place. So the God that would die would be for the forgiveness of sins. So the blood would be taken by the priest and serve as God has instructed. Then the other God. The priest will lay hands on that God. I wish I brought two goats in here. How wonderful. Lay hands on the head of that goat. And then you would confess all your sins. The whole house would confess their sins. And by the laying of hands there, the goat would take the sins of the people upon itself. Then the Bible says, a fit man was necessary to then take this God into the wilderness. Where nothing lives. Are you with me, Pastor Lord? After that, a fit man. Can I talk for a second about this fit man? It was necessary that a fit man be found to take the God. You could not give that God to any man but a fit man. Let's go back to Leviticus chapter 16, Mama. Then he is to take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He is to cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Wonderful. Galatians 20, verse 20, same. When Aaron had finished making atonement for the most holy place, mm-hmm. the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall bring forward the life goat. Mm-hmm. He is to lay he- both hands on the head of the life goat and confess over to it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, mm. all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the wilderness in the care of someone appointed for the task. Can you, can you, can you call, come again on that verse? And he shall... He is to lay both hands on the head of the life God and confess over it all the wickedness and the rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the God's head. Mm. He shall send the God away into the wilderness Mm. in the care of someone appointed for the task. Mm. In the care of someone appointed. Uh, King James can somebody read in King James? He sh- Verse 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the life God and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the God and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Wonderful. Let's come back. Can you see what is happening? Two goats. One god dies. is offered as a sacrifice before God for the forgiveness of their sins. The other god leaves. And then the priest lay his hands on that god and confess all the iniquities of the people upon that God. It was important that then this God must be carried into the wilderness. You could not just let it go into the wilderness. It was important that a fit man, a man 
suitable for the task would carry the court. One, he must be able to travel the journey because he has to make sure that this court does not find its way back into the lives of the people. If it would happen that the court would find its way back to the people, then that was a terrible year for the whole house of Israel. Because that meant their sins have come back to them. But it had to be carried away into the wilderness. Because in the wilderness, nothing leaves. Are you with me, Bazalwa? But it needed a fit man to do the task. A man who is fit, who is able to carry the task. Number two, the man must not only be fit in terms of capability, but he must be faithful to the task. Because the man could carry the court and somewhere feel like, ah, I've traveled, it's a long journey already, I can let the court go. But he had to make sure that he goes into the depth of the wilderness and ensure that the, the, this court would not find its way back to the people. May I preach to you this morning and say, for your forgiveness of sins, you needed these two gods. Mm. But these gods were symbolic. They were pointing to a place and a time to come. They were pointing to a man who was to come. Because it is not possible that blood of animals take away sin. But by the blood of the animals, the man's consciousness was helped to receive and say, I receive forgiveness. But the blood would not take away the sin. Why? Because the man that sinned must die. Not the animal. Not that the man who sinned, an animal must die. Are you with me, Bazala? That is why your redemption is so powerful. We never come to comprehend how mighty God has worked to bring us redemption. Because the demand of justice is that the man who sinned must die. So an animal cannot die in the place of the man. But in your case, it was not even a man that died. It was God who died. Oftentimes, we feel like we should do some things just to complete what Jesus did. Just to add on what Jesus did. But child of God, I want to say to you, those two gods were speaking to a man who was to come. That man had to become the high priest himself and become the lamp at the same time too in him. Mm. It was Aaron as a priest, a high priest, and it was the lamp or the God. But Christ became both. He became the high priest. He became the lamp. Why? Because the high priest must be without blemish and the lamp must be without blemish. There is no man who was without blemish. It had to be God himself cloth in mankind Christ Jesus, our Savior, who could take that task and become a high priest and become a lamp at the same time. Glory to God. Amen. The same Christ had to become these two gods. These two gods himself became the two gods. The two gods were fulfilled in him. Because one, he had to die on the cross. One God must die. It must shed its blood for the forgiveness of sin. So Christ died on the cross, shedding his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. 
But the court also, the other court must leave. Okay. Wonderful. Wow. So this court was for forgiveness of sin. Can I tell you what the other court was for? Separation from sin. The God was taking your sins away and separating you from your sins. So his blood purchased our redemption. His blood purchased our forgiveness. But his, 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 his resurrection brought separation from our sins. One God must die. The other one must live. In Christ died on the cross and then he rose from the dead. So in him, the two gods, he died and he rose. One is dead. One is alive. One brings forgiveness. One brings separation. That is why any man who comes to Christ becomes a new creature. He is not only forgiven sins. He is separated from his sins. I want to challenge you today. You come to Christ. You don't only receive forgiveness of sins. Because many times you find believers who are forgiven. But they are not separated from their sins. Thank God for forgiveness of sin. But I want to say to you today, in Christ, there is separation from sin. You cannot be forgiven of your sins and continue with your sins because the two gods come together in Christ. He forgives them this side. He separates you from this side. So that the man would walk totally free from sin. And if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. Fit man. This task was not complete unless you find a fit man suitable to carry the task. If it was a man carrying that goat on your behalf, you really needed to be sure the man is fit for the task. Because if the man is not fit, and the God finds its way. Nigga in numbers around. Oh, I woman goes. Thank God for the fit man. The man who is fit to carry the task. Uti Jesu, I have been with you. But now I go. Let not your heart be troubled. Because a fit man is found. Ati Paula, that you may know the immeasurable greatness of his power that is at work in you. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. He is referring to this fit man. Who was able at the cross when Christ was hanging there, when he died, it was the task of the fit man to carry your sins away. Those three days and three nights, the fit man was carrying your sins away, ensuring that these sins will never find their way to your life. Once he accomplished that task, he came back and said, Light shine. He came back and said, (laughs) When he knew that this task is accomplished, three days and three nights, the blood was shed. Forgiveness. For your sins. The other God must take your sins away. Three days and three nights. When Christ's body 
was lying on the grave. It was the task of the fit man to carry your sins. And then show, go and see, these sins are getting into the wilderness where there is no life. They will never find its way into your life. Bezuti sounds. I can see how the fit man dealt with my sins. As far as the east is from the west, so far has it separated me from my sins. Can you help me preach, brother? Please come. Come here. Musa, come, 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 help me preach. Mr. Lamin, please come, help me preach. Hi? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So the Okay, yeah, fine. Watch this. The three days and three nights. The feet man was carrying our seeds, separating us from our seeds as far as the east is from the west. So when you turn to your east and you turn to your west and you start taking three steps each, three steps, three steps, then turn and face your west, turn and face your south, then you keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. That is the work of the feet man. That is the work of the spirit of God separating you from your sins. You are going to the east. You are going to the west. They will never meet. That is what happened to your sins and mine. We will never meet. Wonderful. On the third day, when the task was completed, Christ rose from the dead. When he rose from the dead, the two goats, the lamb that died, the risen one, this one brought forgiveness. This one brought us separation from our sin. Are you with me, Brother? He did not just separate us from our sins. Because, you know, many times we feel wonderful. I am a Forgiven sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm saved by grace. But let me help you. That work of Calvary did not come back with a forgiven sinner. When the fit man was working, when the Spirit of God was working and bringing this eternal redemption to your life and mine, he did not bring back a forgiven sinner. He made sure that he will take away that very nature that causes you and me to sin. Then Paul comes and says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All the things are gone. Behold, all things have become new. I want you to know that you have a new you inside you. You have a new man inside you. The nature of the risen Christ is inside you. The moment you receive Christ, the Spirit of God has dealt with your sinful nature. You have a new nature, a righteous nature, a nature that makes you fit to stand before God without shame, without guilt, without inferiority. That is the work of the fit man, separating you from your sins. May I come to a close by saying I call you as a child of God to your freedom in Christ. What the children of Israel did it was to present themselves before the Lord. Are you with me, Bazarwa? I challenge you to present yourself before the Lord. The Lord will do the work in you. Everything else, the children of Israel, 
would just wait and the Lord, the priest would work. After that, they will receive what the priest has accomplished. You and I, you cannot work an inch to make yourself fit to be acceptable before God. There is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing you can ever do to make yourself right before God. Actually, the worst sin is the sin of man trying to justify himself. Neglecting what Christ has done and trying to do it himself. The reason you, if you were to do it yourself, there was no need for Christ to come. It was simply because you couldn't do it yourself. That's why God did it. And it did everything and left nothing to you except to receive what he has done. I want to challenge you today. Receive your total freedom. Ati, Basafesu chapter 4. Put on the new man. What makes this journey so tough, Basalwa? Is trying to please God. It makes the journey heavy. One man of God says he stayed the whole day. And read the Bible from morning. Was a on Allah. Then it took fifteen or thirty minutes break. Let me put it like that. And then by the end of the day, he said, "Wonderful! Wow, God, you should be proud to have a man like me. I've been sitting here the whole day reading the Bible. Wow, what a wonderful, devoted Christian!" Before he finished that, the devil was saying, but you wasted 30 minutes. Oh. Wasted 30 minutes. Oh, I felt so condemned. Oh, God, I could have used that 30 minutes. I could have read another chapter. My point is that you can never do enough. You will never do anything that can qualify you to be right with God. God has done everything to qualify you to be right with him. Accept what God has done and enjoy what God has done. Wonderful. When the devil puts pressure in your life to say this and that and that, I remind myself that, oh, by the way, what can I do? What is it that I can do that can make God accept me? And do you know an answer to that? Nothing. Nothing. Except to receive and rely on what God has done. Amen. The second part of my conclusion is to challenge you. Do not only walk in the forgiveness of sin. Walk in the separation from sin. As a child of God, particularly these days, we need believers who are forgiven. Not just believers who are forgiven of sins, but continue in them. But we need believers who are forgiven and separated from their sins. That's the light the world seeks to find in our lives. Oh, God, say, I mean, what can I do that I can be separated from sins? Put on the new man. Put on what Christ has already done. Rely on the work of the fit man in your life. Rely on the work and the presence of the spirit of God in your life. You know, if you make time to be in the presence of the spirit of God, I can guarantee you there is no sin that will live in your life. No. Because his task was accomplished, separating us from our sins. Presenting yourself before God. Making time. Oh, okay. Let me close here. It becomes natural, Bazalwa, to live a right life, to live a holy life. It's not work of the muscles. 
It's not work of the masses. It's just presenting yourself before the Lord. And as the Lord work in your spirit, you naturally live the life of the spirit. See, we are not walking according to the dictates of the flesh, but according to the dictates of the spirit. So when you bring yourself before God, God will empower you in your spirit and your walk will be natural. Enjoy your freedom. Because if Christ sets you free, you are free indeed. And that nature that was causing you to sin, the spirit of God, the fit man, removed it and gave you one because that one, one illustrates. Every time you see, this is a plank and nails. When you see, Gungena Spigi. When you see, Gungena Spigi. Asuka Bangay goes to Tinka Kiliti Pigi, Lenga Vesetting Genile into this wood. Then he says, But when you come to Christ, Christ removes those nails. Are you with me, Basel? And they say, but somehow, sorry, those marks are there. But I'm here to tell you today that when you come to Christ, Christ does not only remove those nails, he takes away that plate, that wood, and throw it away and give you a fresh one. That has not dent, no nothing. That has separated you from your sins. As Ezekiel, a new heart will I give you. That heart will cause you to walk in my ways. That is what has happened in your life. Christ forgave your sins. And then he separated you from your sins. It doesn't matter how much addiction is in your life. Okay. Okay, thank you. Don't try to stop it. Don't work. Don't forget. Don't. Ah, I'm going to say, I don't want to do this thing anymore. Don't try to stop it. The best way to stop that, present yourself in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Because any effort of trying to stop sinning without a transformation inside is wasted, wasted effort. It won't yield anyway. The best way to live right and enjoy your freedom in Christ, present yourself before the Lord. As Paul, put on the new man. Allow this man to rule your mind. Allow this new nature to control your life. Your walk will be different. Your walk will be natural. Amen. Let us pray. name of Jesus Christ our Lord we appreciate you and we honor you as we leave this morning we thank you we are living in the presence of your spirit who is able to work in us and accomplish that which is pleasing in the sight of God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask 
or imagine. We thank you and we appreciate you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We declare we are free because the Son has set us free. We are free from sin. We are separated from sin. We are free from every power of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the King, we appreciate you. As we present ourselves before you each day, thank you for the work of the fit men in our lives empowering us, enabling us to live a life that is worthy unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ the King, we appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be glorified this morning. Be magnified, Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.